Hi and welcome to this AI tutorial for Unreal Engine 4. Um, I'm your host Phil Carlisle. So what we're going to cover in this uh, set of tutorials actually we're going to I'm going to break it up into small sections so we don't spend it too much time in each one and we're going to start off with a little introduction theory just to get you sort of aware of the areas that we're going to break down and we're going to work on some practical examples and the first one we're going to work on is a typical guard that you might see in something like an MMO so somebody who goes to a position in the world uh, essentially looks for aggression and any aggressive acts and reacts to those kind of things and we'll throw in some way of filtering out which uh, which events and which characters you interact with we or you react with uh, along the way the next part will add some mob AI so I'm thinking of an RPG kind of saying for these kind of things and that will have uh, some behavior that the mob does uh, you know we'll, we'll try and add a bit of variety into that it'll react to player attacks it will use um, attacks itself and then it will have an uh, an aggression radius so basically an area that when it gets too far away it will decide not to continue um, combat so the typical MMO kind of mob and then the third one we'll do is um, probably more a sort of passive NPC kind of uh, AI so it will do some duty cycle it will have something it does as a pattern and it will react to players and mobs and it will basically uh, run to the guards or take cover if attacked so those are the three ones that we're going to cover in this first set of tutorials uh, so let's start off with a theory and traditionally when you think of AI um, most people probably think of it in this sense where you've got uh, three sets um, stages of interaction if you think about it so the characters have to sense something about the world and and the sense somehow leads into some decision-making process the think part of this and then finally after you've thought about what to do you're going to try and perform some action so we sent we, we call this a sense think act cycle so it's essentially a continuously looping cycle that will sense the world decide about what to do and then act on those decisions so if we look at the ai part the sensory part for unreal um what are the kind of things we want to know about so for instance we might want to think about what's nearby to us as a character what is close to us have we seen or heard anything and then things like internal states are we hungry um, maybe we need to go to the bathroom and those kind of things and then finally the there are things that we kind of um, maybe want to classify so things like do we like something how have we got some memory to associate with something so those are the kind of things we might want to think about in terms of the NPC's uh, perception and sense and those are the things that we store we store some data about these senses so that the decision making cycle can use them and we need something to store that information so generally the sensory information is stored in a thing called a, a blackboard um, but the problem is that that when you're doing this sense cycle the sense is actually the thing that costs so much of our time uh, typically senses things like what is nearby actually require some kind of either a physics based check or an engine check in some way and it tends to be that these are the most costly things so actually doing decisions is actually relatively quick compared to the sensory information that we need to make those decisions based on um, so we try and optimize those kind of things and we we do that in two ways really one of the ways is that we store this information in a blackboard so we actually keep the information around rather than having to sense it um, continuously necessarily and the other thing is that um, we look at how we're doing the sensory kind of questioning so generally you, you make a bunch of sensory queries and the idea is that we have um, a fairly expensive operation if we rely on the physics engine 
And this is kind of a problem, right? So we want to actually minimize the number of these kind of checks we do. So the, the, the best way you can do this is to change the frequency of how often you check. And uh, if you look at the Unreal Engine, well, we'll get on to how you change the frequency of these checks, but just know that you can change these sensory sort of information. Um, one thing that we have a problem with is that if we only check in frequently, then there's a potential for the data to be out of date. So if we only check the, the number of players that are around us, say, once every two seconds, it could be that there's a player close to us that has happened in the last second or two or up to two seconds that we don't know about so there's a question of the there's a sort of trade-off between frequency and the the sort of quality of the data that we've got in. and and essentially we're storing that in our blackboard so the unreal engine that part that deals with this sense uh, in in terms of how the current system works in the behavior tree is a thing called a service and the service has a frequency manipulation mechanism created in it and we'll show you an example of that when we get onto the actual sort of behavior tree coding the other thing is that the um, the perception system in uh, the unreal engine is a component based model and I'll show you the the AI component involved but it means that we can actually maybe create our own perception model create our own uh, querying system later on and have that as a component interface so we will not probably not do that in this initial set of tutorials but we will maybe look at that as a more advanced feature and finally obviously the things that we're sensing have to be stored somewhere and we it's good to keep that data around because we might use it in some decisions so we generally store that in some data structure and the common sort of um, implementation is to use a behavior tree with a thing called a blackboard and I'll talk you through what a blackboard is when we're actually looking at the code but the best way to think of it is just a big flat set of data we know about don't care about the actual details right now but that's essentially how to think about it so the next part of this kind of system this cycle is the think part and this is the decision logic and generally what you'll find is that decision logic although it's the trickiest part in terms of design is actually quite simplistic in what we're actually doing is in terms of decision um, decision questions it's if I know about this guy then I'm going to run to him or I'm going to shoot him if I don't know about somebody I'm going to do an idle so the, the actual sort of decision logic itself is generally quite simple and usually fairly quick but it is design intensive in terms of uh, we have to really think through what we actually want the decisions to be and what the outcomes of the decisions to be and what data we need to create those decisions in the first place so it tends to be that a lot of your time is spent working in this think part which is probably why people think that's the most important part but it's actually more about design and and creating the behavior you want and it's less about that being particularly important in terms of what technique you use for it um, so basically all of these decisions are what I like to think of as conditional logic they're basically saying from what we know about the world is this condition true or not and if it is true then we should perform some kind of contingent behavior and the Unreal Engine version of this is the the conditional part is using a thing called decorators and again we'll have a look at that in when we're actually coding the behavior tree but just think of decorators as condition operations so um, basically true or false tests and you'll see that when we actually create some now uh, there is a whole bunch of theory involved in academic AI about different forms of decision-making systems and because um, there are lots of different ways of approaching decision-making in general I think it's just come about that there's lots of ways of computationally thinking about decision making 
But what I would suggest to you is that the actual flavor of decision making probably isn't important as being able to design the decisions that you actually want to have happen. So don't worry too much about what form it takes. We're using a behavior tree, but there are plenty of other things. So there's, um, there's more deliberative systems like planners. There's probably slightly simpler systems like state machines and hierarchical state machines. There are things like subsumption architectures from robotics. Um, but we're using a behavior tree system. I would say read about those kind of things, but don't worry about them too much because the design is probably much harder than the implementation of a particular um, architecture. So the final part of this is the, the, the action execution model, the acting. And from a player's point of view, this is the thing they see happening, right? So, so actually this is quite important, I think, from a player's perspective. And one thing you'll notice when we get on to actually making behavior is that the acting is tends to be the most long running part of this whole system. So the sensory model will run at a certain frequency. The decision making will probably kind of run when that data changes, but actually the action that you're currently doing tends to run for quite a long time. Um, but there are sort of a few edge cases here, and one of them is that the action can actually kind of fail to complete. So a good example would be a character's moving from A to B, which is quite a, a large distance, and something gets in the way. So the action of moving essentially fails, and so that means that we need to be able to react to that failure. So the action, the, the, the act part of this cycle is the doing thing, right? Move or animate or um, say a line of dialogue or whatever. And this is the part that's really important to the player is that it gives feedback on what the, the character is actually doing. This is, um, I think, probably the most undervalued part of game AI is understanding this acting part. And this is done inside the Unreal Engine by a thing called tasks. And there are a, quite a, f a, you know, there was a number of sort of basic tasks to get you started, but the real power is it, perhaps in writing your own tasks to do certain things. So we'll, we'll spend a lot of our time um, configuring the behavior tree to make the correct decisions in terms of design, but also writing tasks to make them do something useful. So just to sort of summarize the whole kind of model, you can think of it as a sort of behavior tree is all of this sense think act cycle in one lump. So you've got the senses as services, you've got the decision making thinking part as decorators, and then you've got the acting part as tasks. So they're just the names that the designers of the Unreal Engine AI have decided to use. Um, I've seen other terms for it. It's best not to worry about those specifics. And then all of this behavior tree relies on data coming to and from the blackboard. So in terms of uh, our guard AI, let's think of some of the things that we actually want to do. So the first part is that we want the guard to have a guard post, right? So I'm thinking of a sort of town entrance, that kind of guard. Um, so there's a question of like, okay, so how do we tell the AI where to guard? Um, we need to know that the guard can move around the world, which is relatively simple. And then there's the other part of the behavior. So when they're at the guard post, they need to react to aggression. And th this comes from things like um, when uh, an object hits another object, do we perceive that event and do we react to it? And these are design decisions you need to make as well. Um, do we react to all events or do we only react to attacks? And then what is the uh, reaction supposed to be? Are we supposed to uh, go and attack any aggressors? Or do the aggressors have to be in some kind of faction? That's another design question. And ultimately, um, most of the things I've seen for this kind of system generally have an attack range. So basically, once they get beyond that range, they decide to go back to their starting point and essentially reset. So this is the traditional guard area that I think we'll start off with um, in the first part. 
the other sort of design decision we've got is how do we like denote what is a faction or non-faction character so there's a question there of how we um, set these kind of things out data wise and we'll go into that when we look at the implementation so I'd like to think of the AI and Unreal Engine as um, broken out into it's quite a complicated system strangely enough but but it's actually broken out into relatively simple um, systems in my head so I, I think of the AI character and when we come to actually create it you'll, you'll see what I mean I think of the character as the body the sort of um, embodiment of the thing um, and that character generally involves working with animation blueprints um, inside the animation blueprints got a state machine for doing the animations and those kind of things and then we have an AI controller which works with an AI character so the AI controller I kind of think of as the head it actually doesn't really do an awful lot other than instantiate a behavior tree but um, so you, you could also think of it as like the the AI character as a horse and the AI controller as a rider um, some people in AI talk about a sort of virtual yoke so it, it's it's the controller is like a joystick controlling the character in a way as well so you can think of it in those terms and then the final part is the baby tree which is the decision logic again and you can think of that as the brain so the behavior tree kind of lives inside the AI controller and the AI controller controls the body so it controls the character that's probably the best way to think about it and then finally obviously we've got the blackboard which works in tandem with the behavior tree and acts as the memory so those are the major systems that we'll have to create when we want to create characters um, so before we get on uh, I just want to mention that you probably can be best advised to visit aigamedev.com and just review their information on behavior trees the unreal engine behavior trees are slightly different and they're more event based but that will give you a good overview of behavior trees in general um, but with that said let's get started in the actual code <laughs> 